if the mind is scattered, if it's dispersed, if it's clouded, uh, if it's lost in distractions, lost in ruminations of various kinds, lost in fantasy of various kinds, it's really difficult to practice in any effective way or even function very well or be able to be of much help to other people. On the other hand, steadying the mind, being able to plop attention on something useful and keep it there or uh, recognize that what we're attending to, one is attending to is not so useful and move it elsewhere, moment by moment, is not so easy. In this context, it, it's useful for me to think about three fundamental forms of practice. And you may observe all three of these forms. The first fundamental way to engage the mind usefully is simply to be with what's there. Experience the experience, feel the feelings, um, be present with what's there, hopefully skillfully, with holding it in a field of awareness, with compassion for yourself, with interest, with curiosity, perhaps disentangling the threads of the tapestry of experience. Disentangling was a metaphor frequently used by the Buddha. It's useful often to sense down into, feel into what is deeper, more fundamental, such as the hurt beneath the anger, or the younger layers and the kind of parfait of the psyche. In the process of that being with, the content of consciousness may change, but we're not trying to change it directly. We're not exercising wise effort to nudge it or influence it deliberately. That, in my view, is the most profound form of practice. It's, uh, I think the bulk of the mind moments that are useful here are in the, under the heading of simply being with what's there again and again and again, continuously receptive to what's there. And it's not the whole of practice. Even though being with what's there is most fundamental because often it's all we can do, ride out the storm without pouring gasoline on the fire, simply be with what's there. Um, also, as practice matures, increasingly the other modes of practice I'll speak of in a moment tend to fall away. There's a kind of ongoing abiding openly, uh, continuously letting go. But meanwhile, as the Buddha taught, there's a place for working with the mind, not just being with the mind, in the form first under the heading of wise effort, of preventing or reducing or even ending those factors in the mind that lead to suffering and harm for ourselves and others. To use a bit of a problematic term, negative material, let's say. So we deliberately, let's say, re release tension from the body, or we deliberately recognize that what we're thinking, believing is not helping us or others, and we let it go. If we are releasing, that's under the gen deliberately, that's under the general heading of that aspect of wise effort. And then the third aspect is the cultivation, the development, the increasing of that which is beneficial to ourselves and others, that which promotes happiness and welfare for ourselves and others. So we may cultivate wise view over time, cultivate mindfulness, cultivate steadiness of mind, cultivate a warmer and warmer heart, cultivate resilience, gratitude, cultivate skillfulness how to interact with other people, including people that are really quite different from oneself. So there's a place for all of these. If we use the metaphor of the mind as like a garden, we can witness the garden, pull weeds, plant flowers. Let be, let go, let in. 